if you aren't already subscribed, go down there and press that subscribe button right now, you bloody snake. No offense. Anyways, cue the goddamn intro. Hey, what's up? Unleash here today, and we're back with once again another video on Sonic Colors Ultimate. I swear, I've used this topic like so much, but oh well. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the positive side to Sonic Colors Ultimate, since we're going to talk about the causes of concern, and yeah, decide to just go positive this time. And honestly, Colors Ultimate isn't all bad. Let's be honest. Come on here, uh, come on, it's not all bad. Anyways, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let us discuss the positives to Sonic Colors Ultimate. Starting off with number one, the graphics. I know this has been a very controversial opinion here, but in all seriousness, the graphics have definitely been getting better over time. And even putting the graphics aside, it's still nice that they're upgrading the visuals and everything. I mean, they could have just done what Nintendo did with Super Mario 64 and operate in widescreen. Yeah, they could have done that, but did they? No, no, they didn't. Thank you, Sega. I'm blind squirrel. So yeah, the graphics, we get 4K60, except for the Switch. I mean, you kind of deserve that Switch, honestly. It's not our fault, like, it's not powerful enough. That's your loss, I guess. But yeah, we've got high resolution, and the game is looking better, like I've said already. Like, a lot of things that look really good. Sweet Mountain, Asteroid Coaster, Tropical Resort, yes, is looking better and better. Hopefully, by the time the game comes out, Maybe they can even give us a day one patch for the game, to make the game look as perfect as possible. Who knows? Right, on to number two, which is the music. And I'm not necessarily saying that, all oh, this music's perfect, because, well, I do think it is, but it's more the fact that they actually put the time and effort in to actually go and remix the whole soundtrack. Okay, not the whole soundtrack. They've actually gone in and put the effort to remix all the stage music and boss music. And man, I have so much respect for them for doing that, like, they didn't need to do that, but hey, they still went and did it, so my props to them. Right, the next thing here, now see, I think this is a really good addition to this game, honestly, and that is a perfect homing attack, or well, a sweet spot homing attack, whatever you want to call it. Now, I think this is a great addition to Sonic Colors Ultimate. Not only is it just giving more skill to the player, but it actually gives more boost, because a lot of the time in Sonic Colors, you weren't really boosting because, because of the wisps and... A lot of enemies do not refill the boost gauge when you attack them, neither do rings, so it's nice to see that they're giving a way for you to get the boost gauge filled up. Not, it doesn't give you a lot of boost, which I do like too, but it's not a minuscule tiny amount either. I think it's just the right amount, and honestly, it looks really cool, honestly, the rainbow effect as well. Literally, Sonic Colors. Anyways, next thing is Rival Rush Mode. How do you like this addition too? Man, I'm just thinking about how much content I'm to this game now. Man, I am excited for this game, like, honestly. I think Rival Rush Mode is another good thing, probably the best thing that they added in this game, honestly, in my opinion. Because it just... It just seems like... This could actually be the challenge in Sonic Colors Ultimate. I mean, I'm hoping it is. Because, like in Sonic Force, for example, that game is extremely easy, but if you wanted some challenge, like me, for example, He's a secret and extra stages, and well, when you know what to do there, they're not particularly hard, but they still do offer some challenge to the player, and I do like that. I really do like that. So I'm hoping that Ravel Rush Mode does offer some challenge in Sonic Colors Ultimate. Really hoping that that does happen. Just putting that out there. And if it doesn't add challenge, I won't be mad, but I'll be a bit disappointed, though. It is still adding it in, so that's good. More content, I'm fine with it. The next thing we're talking about is the Jade Ghost Wisp. Honestly, is it really much to say about this? I mean, you Wisp, can't really complain there. It opens up a lot of more pathways as well. As we've seen in the gameplay already, we've seen like more pathways that you can go with the Jade Ghost Wisp, and honestly, can't complain there. More place to explore. Perfect. More level design changes. I like that. Because colors... Was well, a bit linear at times. I think it's nice to have some more exploration in the game. Because I do like my exploration in Sonic games. I love the Werehog and the metal collecting, so yeah, count me in. Right, the next thing we're talking about is the upscaled cutscenes. 
Now, now there has been some questions as to uh, whether they've actually updated the cutscenes or not, but they have said that they actually are updating the cutscenes, they're going into the source code, but from some images, it looks like they haven't actually done that. They've actually just got an AI upscaled it. And I don't know who's lying, honestly, the images or the guy who's actually made the game. Who knows, not me. But, even still, it is nice that they're actually upscaling the cutscenes, so we have to see like, 4K beautiful gameplay, but then we have the 480p cutscenes. They look really weird. Honestly, thank God that I actually did that. Thank God. Thank God. Right. The next thing we're talking about is customization. I like this, honestly. It's just a really good addition. And, and if the way they're saying this and I'm implying this, this could actually be really good because if, I'm re if I read those articles we read earlier in my l one of my last videos, I think it was called Sonic Colors Ultimate Good and Bad News. Recent video, I think that was. Yeah. They said that the boost, different boost that you can customize, will make Sonic feel more powerful. Now, I don't know if that's actually more powerful as in, like, he has different abilities and stuff like that, but if it is, that'd be awesome. And also, it is nice to have some more stuff to collect in the stages, too, because, because Colors, once again, pretty short game and. Not really much to do after collecting that red star it's again supersonic. And seems like customization will be a good way to add more replay value, which I'm liking very much. And I like customization too. Yeah, so the kids too, even Sonic Forces, people like that. Like Mario Kart, they're rushing to Team Sonic Racing. People like that. Makes sense, doesn't it? Right. Honestly, this isn't really like a separate point, more like a branching of points, but the fact that they are actually adding more content to the game. Because... I think you know about a little remaster called... Hmm... Well, not really a remaster, but... This little game called... The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. An absolute abomination, honestly. It costs more than a brand new game. Like... $60 for an upscaled port. Really, that's it. Not even $60 to... $85 if you want fast, fast travel. That is just a rip-off, man. Like, seriously? A decade-old game for $85. Like, the complete package. That is ridiculous, honestly. Colors Ultimate, the max price for that is $45. $40 difference there. And I do know that Skyward Sword is, like, a much bigger game than Colors Ultimate. But still. $40 difference. Man. How the hell has Nintendo gotten away with this for so long? Honestly, somebody needs to do something about this. We saw a riot at Nintendo headquarters, wherever they are. Find them, say, uh, Nintendo, can you please lower the price of your Skyward Sword HD remaster? Thank you. Well, so I'm going to remaster somebody port. Look at Sega over there. They have the beautiful Sonic Colors Ultimate remaster for the max price of $45 for the digital deluxe edition. What the bloody hell is going on here? Sega Radio and Nintendo don't. <laughs> Anyways, next point is, the game is more accessible now. Yeah, so they made the game more easier, but that can be a bad point. It isn't all bad, because, yeah, kids do find Sonic games hard, and making the games easier is a good thing to do. And for IGN too, can't leave them out. Right, the next thing is the pricing, and... Yeah, $45, not full price for a remaster. Honestly, that's really good. Once again, like Skyward Sword HD, Nintendo, god damn it. I don't know why I care so much about it, I don't have a Switch, not even going to be buying the game, so... Really does that affect me, but still. Right, these next three points aren't really relating to the game, but are more relating to the future, what the game actually is. Because this next point is... The fact that we're finally getting another part of a Sonic game. Do you know how long it's been since we got a part of a Sonic game? Sonic Lost World on Steam. That was the last part of a Sonic game we ever got. Think about that for one second. Sega have had this back catalog of amazing Sonic games, and they've done nothing with them. Absolutely goddamn nothing. And it's about time to finally decide to port stuff, goddamn. And we've also got Sonic Origins coming next year. More ports, which we have been asking for. So thank you, Sega. Thank you. The next point is the fact that Colors Ultimate isn't just a simple port like Skyward Sword HD. 
That's probably getting annoying now, me just comparing this to that. But come on, how can I not? It's Nintendo, like, god damn. I mean, I guess you could say that about Sega. For a lot of things. I mean, at least Nintendo do produce high quality games. But still, leave me alone here, thank you. Anyways, Close Ultimate isn't just a simple port. It's a remaster. Not remake, like some people have been mistaken it for. It is a remaster. With more content, upgraded visuals, and porting it to modern platforms. Does it get better than that? Nintendo, take notes, please. And the final thing that I'm going to talk about here is what Colors Ultimate could lead to. Now, a lot of people have been saying that no, just because Sonic Colors Ultimate will do well, there's even going to get Sonic Unleashed Ultimate. But how the hell do you know that? Explain to me your reasoning why this would not happen. Do you, have you even met Sega before? They literally just do what works. For example, the boost formula. They carried down until it worked, and it did. Unleashed, colors, generations, forces. And then you have the adventure formula. SA1, SA2, O6. Then they swap with O6 because it didn't work. Then they move on to the boost. And it, the boost kept working, that's why they kept doing it and over and over. So think about this for one second. Since Colors Ultimate could do well, do you think there's a positive correlation that we could get more ultimates or remasters even? It's not far out of the realm of discussion here, is it? No. No, it's not. So Colors Ultimate could be the beginning of something great. We just don't know it yet. Anyways, that's about wraps it for today's video. So yeah, there are some good things with Colors Ultimate. Don't just slander me because I've been saying it's bad a lot. And by a lot, I mean, not that much. Because I am excited for Colors Ultimate. I don't know how many times I have to say that before people actually learn that. Oh god, maybe Olish does actually hate Colors Ultimate. When the hell have I ever said I hate Colors Ultimate, man? God damn it. Just leave me the hell alone. Bro. Anyways, yes. There are some good things with Colors Ultimate. Remember that I said good things about it, alright? Those are attack me in the comments now. Hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially the last one. And I hope to see you next time. Peace.